In Onshape, you can import files in a variety of formats. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to start off on my home page and go to the Create button. Let's make a folder for this. I'll call this my Imported Models. And then Create. Let's double click on the folder. Now let's create a document. And I'll just call this my General Imports. Create the public document. So I've got my Part Studio started. To add files, you'll go to the plus button in the lower left hand corner and then import. And let me navigate to a folder. Let's start off with a regular step file. I will select that and then click the open button. And I can import to this document or combine into a single part studio. There's also this option here to orient imported models with the Y axis up. I think the reason for that is in Onshape, if you take a look at the cube in the upper right hand corner, Onshape has the Z axis up. Some people prefer the Y axis to be up, so that's why you have that option there. But I'm gonna leave the Z axis up, then click the OK button. And now the upload is in progress. It is importing. I'm going to close my notifications. And we'll wait a few seconds as it brings in the geometry. This is a joystick. I think I got it off of trace parts. And it is a bit complicated. See that we have the tab here down at the bottom. And it's still loading the studio data. So let's give that. Oh, wait, there it is in here. And. I can rotate around and so yeah, step right, oops, this is the way that it's supposed to go. And in this case here, maybe I should have used the Y axis as up, but it doesn't really matter because I'll probably assemble this somewhere else later on. So the step file worked. Next up, I will stay in the same document and let's try importing a SolidWorks file. Go to the import button. And I naturally do not expect any issues with this, seeing as Onshape was created by the same people who created SolidWorks. All right, it was translated correctly. Let me collapse my notifications. And here we have the tab for this one. And there it is. It imported the part geometry that is good. All right, for the next one, I can stay in here. I only have a few different imported models in here. Let's hit the plus sign and then import. And I downloaded some files off of Inventor in from GrabCAD. And here we have an iPhone in Inventor format. This is courtesy of someone on GrabCAD named Ismail Verkin. So Ismail, thank you for uploading this. So let's click the open button and upload in progress. It's importing. That one took a few more seconds, but it's good. Let's collapse the notifications and then go to the tab for the iPhone model. And here we have it in here. Really nice little model that we have here, courtesy of Mr. Verkin. Okay, next up I'm going to import, let's grab a CATIA file. So, plus, and then import. And I'll go to the folder where I put the file. And this user named Dynamicus on GrabCAD import or created this really nice Iron Man helmet. So let's bring that one in. And it's importing. Okay, there it took a few extra seconds because I assume the complex geometry. Taking a look at my tabs, here we go. That is really, really cool. Nice work, Mr. Dynamicus, or Miss Dynamicus. I should not be assuming that Dynamicus is a male. And now for the next one, I'm going to import a bunch of Creo files. And just so that I don't end up with all the tabs cluttered up in here, I'm going to go back and create a new document. So here I am in my imported models folder. Create document. I'll call this my Creo imports.
And again, we'll go to the plus sign in the lower left hand corner, hit import. And let me go to a folder. And I'll first start with a part file and then open it. And this part file, you can tell by the name, is in Creole Parametric 6.0. And this highlights one of the advantages of using software as a service. They do all the updates for you in the background so you don't have to update build codes on your own. And so they have a way of making sure that you're always current. Creo 6.0 at this point is about seven or eight months uh, been released. And they can make sure that when a new version comes out that they update it so that they can they update on shape so that it can work with the latest formats of other different CAD packages. So that's good for an individual part file. If you want to import an assembly file, there is something that you're going to have to do. I'm going to hit the plus sign and then go to import again. If you want to import an assembly from another CAD package, not just Creo Parametric, but let's say it is SolidWorks or you're importing a CAT product from CATIA or you are importing an inventor assembly, you are going to take the files and you're going to zip them up. And the name of the zip file has to be the name of the top level component in the assembly, the top level of the assembly. And so that's what I have here. I have a bunch of files from a transmission assembly and it's a subassembly in there with the name 01-51200 zipped up together. Let's click the open button. And since I'm importing in an assembly here, we have the option to import to this document or you combine, can combine to a single part studio. Here again, we have the option for importing the models with the Y axis up, but I'm just going to import to the document and there's quite a bit of components in here. So it's starting to import. Let's let that run for a few seconds. While that's importing, I will admit that I did try this out with some other models that I downloaded in other CAD packages. I had some difficulty getting them to import into Onshape, but I think that means I just need more practice. I just want to make sure I'm not giving the impression that this works perfectly every single time. All right, in this case here, we do note that we did get some translated with errors and the parts with faults have been imported. Let's collapse this and now I can see I have my tabs down at the bottom of the screen. When you hover your mouse over these different tabs, you get a preview of what that geometry looks like so you can see if you are importing the right thing. And again, I imported a lot of stuff in here so there's a lot of different tabs in here. But let's go to this tab. Now it's loading the studio data. Here it came up fairly quickly and there I have my subassembly. I like how it's got the different component colors in there. And in on shape, on the left hand side of the screen, you have what's called the instances list. And this is the list of the components inside of the assembly. And so with that, that's how you can import step file, SolidWorks, Inventor, CATIA, Creo Parametric parts and assemblies into Onshape. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.